Hey there! Is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together, following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community, and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So, no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So, welcome to church.
The Lord bless you today. The Lord bless you today. God is good and he's good all the time. And his mercy endureth forever. I said his mercy endureth forever. I said his mercy endureth forever. We're glad about it. We're glad about it. We're glad for his mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fell not. And when we look back from a march up into this present time, if you're still able to breathe, if you're walking on your own, if you're talking, if you know that one plus one is two, I need you to give God some praise this morning. So many people are lost. So many people are gone, but the Lord left us here and he left us here to do what? To give him praise, to give him glory, to give him honor, to give him reverence, to glorify his name. So we're glad this morning for life. I said we're glad this morning for life. And, what we, and, and we're grateful that last night wasn't our last night. We are grateful for life, for life. And so we've been taking it for granted. So many of us have been taking it for granted on so many occasions. But 2020 has taught us how to be grateful for life, to be grateful, to be able to breathe on your own, to be brave, to be grateful, to have a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength. And so we are grateful for life this morning. And I'm so glad that you have joined us in this virtual church. Uh, I said, I'm glad you joined us in this virtual church. We are yet having church. We are yet glorifying the Lord we are yet magnifying the Lord when you might not be in the brick and mortar yourself we do have some people in the audience this morning that's in the brick and mortar but you might not be in the brick and the mortar if you're watching this but that's all right that's all right because wherever you are God is with you wherever you are the Lord is with you you are the temple of the Holy Ghost and I'm glad that the scripture says that if any two or three of us has gathered together and we're gathered together we're gathered together we're virtually gathered together come on he said he would be in the midst amen and I'm glad that he's in the midst this morning are you glad about it I'm glad about it I'm glad about that I can feel his presence and I'm telling you his presence is with us today to uh, speak peace to us in the midst of what's going on and so we are here today um, on the second Sunday uh, in October, second Sunday in October, and we're glad for another Sunday to be on the virtual live. I want you to get your, um, we're going to go to the word of the Lord today. We're going to go to the word of the Lord today, uh, and I want to talk, first I want to say uh, congratulations to our member of the month, our member of the month, our member of the month. This member of the month for October is Elder Takesha Davis. Come on, Elder Takesha Davis, and we are grateful for her being the member of the month. She works with our women's department. She works with our youth. She uh, is one of our elders here at the church. Um, and whatever, whatsoever her hands find to do, she does it. And that's why she's a blessed woman. And she is certainly uh, the member of the month for October for the Citadel Cathedral of Praise and Worship. Amen. Faithfully loyal loves her pastor, loves her family, come on here, loves her family, loves her church family, loves God, and we love her. Amen. If you can shout out some love to her today, uh, those of you in the comments, shout some love out to her today and let her know how much we love her and how much we appreciate her in the name of the Lord. And so we want to remind you that we are going to be having a town hall meeting for the men and the women on the fourth Friday in October. Fourth Friday in October, we will be having a men and women's town hall. And uh, we're going to be talking about relevant and 
pertinent information in regards to this election that's coming up. You've seen the debates yourself. And before you've seen the debates, we've been living with this for the last four years. Can't get no witness in here. Time for a change. Time for a change. Time for a change. So we will be having... Um, some of our uh, politicians, elected officials, and other people that can give some insight on, uh, on uh, the, who we should be voting for, or give us some insight on what we should be doing, what we should be doing, and how we should be getting people to know that your vote counts. I know it is a multitudinous number of people, and you're just one person by yourself, but your vote counts. Our ancestors, our black and brown people, were beat and whipped and hung and lynched because they wanted to vote. And here we are standing on their shoulders, we're standing on their shoulders, and it is an indictment to them if we don't go out and vote. Put your mask on, social distance, and go on out. I used to say pull the lever, but however they're doing it, vote. However they're doing it, vote. Your vote is important. Your vote does count, and we've got to get rid of number 45. Come on here. We've got to get rid of number 45. We're going to throw 45 out just like we threw Colt 45 out. They both got to go. They both have got to go. So we're grateful today. We're grateful today for you, you, and especially you. Please remember that we are having our town hall for our men and women's department, uh, which we will be discussing pertinent information on the last Friday in October. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Uh, just for a, just for a uh, text today, I want us to go to uh, Genesis 3 and 9. Genesis 3 and 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And the Lord called to Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? That's a question today that's still being asked. Uh, where art thou? Where are you? Where are you? I want to talk to you today. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you in this whole dilemma of pandemic? Where are you in this whole dilemma of COVID-19? Where are you? Where are you? I want to say to us today that we have been thrust into uh, something that we had no idea was coming and maybe our leaders knew and didn't prepare well but for the most part the masses of uh, us in these United States uh, and globally we did not see this coming come and those that did see it coming didn't plan properly for it so we could be prepared and to the extent of this to just in uh, the United States, over 210,000 people have lost their lives. Come on, to, due to this uh, COVID-19. And uh, COVID-19 has also, a, it, you know, it's just been a ordeal. It's been an ordeal because it affects your body and causes everything else to cut up and causes everything else to get out of the whack. Come on. And uh, even if you didn't have any uh, situations before, it makes everything else come to the surface. And that's what's been going on and people are grieving. Come on, there's people. Where are you? Where are you? There are people who are grieving, trying to get through the grief process. Uh, and it's so hard to get through that when you weren't even allowed to uh, have a funeral where you could try to bring and get some closure. So people everywhere are affected by this in one way or the other. Either they have lost someone that they love, either they have been sick themselves, or they have been affected with unemployment because the unemployment is at an all-time high. Many people have lost their jobs. Come on. Many jobs are out of business. I'm talking about big change. Century 21. Lord and Taylor. I'm talking about uh, uh, mom and pop grocery stores uh, who have uh, closed down their doors. Uh, I'm talking about the hotel industry Industry, who has uh, um, been at a loss have had to lay off their employees because people are not traveling people are not like they used to they are staying home the 
airlines, everything has come to a halt. Everything has stopped. And although people in different uh, states uh, have started up their state uh, and went back forth, uh, some went too early and caused other confusion within the state. Come on here. Because the economy, or not the economy, the leader, uh, of, this, the leader of the nation was pushing states to reopen. And reopening too early caused more rise in COVID cases. And so where are you? Where are you in all of this that's going on? Where are you in all of this uh, that's going on? Some people are uh, uh, going through alienation because uh, this quarantine has brought about alienation on many people and isolation on many families and they are alone. We have some single people who are there alone and uh, you know miss the fellowship, miss the coming out, miss the getting together, and miss the coming to the house of the Lord, and that brought, that brought a peace to them. It did something for their mind. It did something for their spirit. It helped them to get through the week. Come on here, and then those are people, where are you in all this? Where are you in all this? And for those who are using your uh, phone apparatus to be a, or your laptop, or your desktop, or your internet, to be able to uh, experience uh, the virtual church. But there are some people that don't have Wi-Fi. There are some people who don't have telephone, uh, Facebook, uh, don't have social media, and they are just out of the loop. They are just out of it all together. Where are you in this process? Some people who are needing to be uh, touched or needing to be uh, 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 feel a presence of something or needing to be looked on, looking to, looking to be looked upon. Come on here. Come on here. Where are you in all this process? Uh, there are people who are hurting because uh, they have not been uh, to the house of God or they are afraid to go out of their houses. Come on here. Where are you with all this that's going on? In the educational realm, we have uh, uh, come back to the schools. Most people are doing remote learning. Come on, remote learning because you feel that it's unsafe for your children to be in the environment where other children are and you not know who's got what. You not know who's affected with what. Some people are asymptomatic. They don't even have any signs of sickness. Come on here. Uh, and you're feeling that it's better for you to have your children do remote learning at home. And so where are you in this process? And to those parents who are home with their children, trying to get them up there early in the morning every day, come on here, you set, away, set aside a workstation in your home with a desk, come on here, so they can feel at home because children need order, children need structure, children need an itinerary, children Children need a plan so you have to set them up and to those parents who are trying to work from home and work with their children remotely it is no easy task it is no walk in the park it is no easy job it's no book on it there's no reading on it it's learning as you go and for those parents who have been out of the schoolroom but find yourself trying to figure out how many apples does Johnny have? Can't get no witness in here. Trying to figure out uh, the math situation, the math problem. I want to see, where are you in the process? Where are you in the process? Uh, our family structures uh, have changed. Uh, 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 come on here. There's a, there's a change in our homes. Uh, and then also the teachers uh, who are teaching remotely. They are teachers who are teaching remotely and have to teach their own children at the same time. Can't get no witness in here. The teachers who are saying this is like double work teaching remotely. Come on here. Uh, the funds have been cut in the education system. Many schools had to let teachers go. Come on here. And yet there is a, even a greater need for more participation in the education process. Uh, we are finding that we have to make uh, brick 
brick so with no straws they're not giving us the straws to make the bricks it is no walk in the park it is devastating it is horrendous it is something that we have never seen before ah but I want to know where are you in the process we've got loved ones who have been sick and we can't even get into the hospital to visit them because of the COVID restrictions can't get no witness in here uh, we can't even get to visit on the daily basis and the tragedy is some of them have passed away and we not know what happened to them in the last waking hours of their life because we were not able to be at the bedside where are you in the process we are finding ourselves trying to come to grips with the reality of the pandemic come on here some people heard about it but they said it's over there in the third country the third world over there it's not over here come on here they told us it would affect those people with pre-existing health situations but we had no idea that the pre-existing health situations would be diabetes and asthma come on here and things that are so common amongst the people of color but to uh, the brown and black people it has devastated our communities it is a wiping out our people where are you in the process where are you in the process where's your mind at where's your head at where's your heart at how are you coming to grips with what's going on in our world there are many people who are feeling that this is the end of the world and it gives them a reason to eat drink and be merry it gives them a reason to go ahead and do whatever you wanted to do because this just may be it but I'm going to speak to Adam today I want to talk to Eve give me give me give me some help in here I want to talk to Kunta come on here I want to talk to Kizzy today I want to talk to the brothers and the sisters today I want to talk to you and you and especially you this is a plot of the enemy this has been this, this has been uh, this has been organized this has been uh, uh, plotted against us come on here to cause people to feel as if it's hopeless it's helpless go ahead and live like you want to live go ahead and love who you want to love go ahead and act like you want to act because we're all doomed for destruction but I've come to talk to you today to tell you that firstly the devil is a liar and he is a defeated foe God is in charge God is in in control God is on the throne he knows that you're on the planet and be not be not dismayed whatever be tied God will take care of you some of you are at your wits end because of money situation because you haven't worked and the money's not coming in come on here just when you thought you were getting ahead here we are now smack dab in a pandemic we're having a hard time to make ends meet people are frustrated on the streets come on here people are frustrated to the extent robbing and stealing and killing we have murderers who are so angry they're about to shoot you to see which way you would fall it is perilous times these are dangerous times but I'm going to tell us today uh, that the Lord will have us to know that he is still 
in charge. He is still on the throne. I want to talk to some people today that feel that they are in a hopeless or helpless situation. Get it together. Get it together. Get it together. God is calling us. Come on here. As God was calling Adam here in this verse. You see what it is that God created man and woman male and female created he them both he created them after he made a world and everything in it in six days and rested on the seventh day because he was finished and everything was good he told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth he gave them a decree he gave them a commandment everything that you see is yours you have dominion over it dominion over the air dominion over the animals dominion over the things in the every creeping thing come on here dominion over the garden of Eden the utopia that he placed them in he said but there's one thing that I don't want you to eat off of, and that is the tree of knowledge of good and evil and it seems like that's what human nature is it seems like everything that God tells us not to do that's what we want to do it's been going on since the beginning of time and the Bible says that Lucifer the fallen angel the archangel of worship that's been dismissed from heaven because his services was no longer needed and he and a third of the angelic hosts fell from heaven heavens to down to the earth here lucifer knows his time forever getting right with God is finished and so his only goal is his only goal is to keep all of us from going where he has been and that's what he's doing today can't get no witness in here and it was Lucifer that beguiled the woman called Eve and said to her talking having conversation with her you got to be careful who you're talking to. You've got to be careful who's in your ear. You've got to be careful because Lucifer is subtle. He is crafty. He is, he is an enemy to God and he is an enemy to you. He's not your friend. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He wants to make you miss out and lose out on the things of God and Lucifer he began to have conversation with Eve now the old folk told us don't 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 even give a space to the enemy because if you if, if you let the enemy ride with you he's gonna want to drive you if you give him an inch he's gonna take a mile the old folk told us be careful of your company the company that you keep be careful of those who are in your ear who are in your ear gate they will try to deter you they will try to sap you of every inch of anointing that you have in your life I'm going to talk to somebody in here and the Bible says that Lucifer he beguiled Eve he told her come on and eat of this and she says no the Lord says we're not supposed to eat of that tree but you can talk to the enemy long enough till he'll make wrong seem right can't get no witness in here and you don't want to help me he'll, if you talk to the devil long enough he'll make wrong seem right what's going on today what's going on today we got many people who are trying to make wrong right they're trying to tell you that you can love anybody you want to love because love is good but there is strange love they just like their strange fire just like their strange praise I want to tell you something the God
God that made us. He made us and created us in his image to worship him. What is the whole duty of man? To fear God, keep his commandments, and to enjoy him forever. For God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But our problem is, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Our problem is, there's another spirit in the land that's come up deep from this COVID, this pandemic and now people are saying I'm living my truth now people are saying it's my truth, I'm living that but I want to go back to the truth that we need to know the truth that Jesus Christ born of a virgin suffered under Pontius Pilate died on the third day and rose again died and then rose again on the third day and coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Let me go on back here again. And now Lucifer, he is tempting Eve. And huh? And that's what the enemy is doing today. He's tempting us in these same points. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Eat this. It'll make you wise eat this it's good for food eat this you'll be as God and he kept talking to Eve so long can't get no witness in here until what does she do what does she do it's not a sin to be tempted the sin comes when you yield to the temptation can't get no witness in here we're all tempted by the enemy every day but the problem doesn't come in until you yield to to the temptation and the Bible says she looked at it again the same truth she looked at it again and she saw that it was good I'm going to tell you something that's what the enemy does he talks to you so he can camouflage the evil and make it look good but everything that looks good to you is not good for you I want to tell you she said she saw that it was good and she ate it come on take a witness in here and when she ate it come on nothing happened but she gave it to her husband that was with her Adam where art thou Adam where art thou she gave it to her husband that was with her he that was the head of the house he that was the head of the home he that was the covering he that was the man of God he that should have been watching he that should have been looking he that should have been uh, shutting that conversation down he should have shut that conversation down when it first started but come on here he wasn't on the other side of the garden he was right there with her the whole time we need some brothers that not to be jelly back we need some brothers some men of God that will stand up and be the priest of their home and be the priest of their family and be the covering for their people and decree and declare that the devil is not going to run rampant in my home that the devil is not going to run my children astray that the devil is not going to turn my wife out that the devil is not going to have his way in my family we need some brothers we need some praying brothers Adam where art thou we need some praying brothers that will stand in the gap and intercede for your family for your children and say not this one this one belongs to God not this one this one belongs to God everything with my name on it come on in here I need somebody in the virtual church I need somebody in the church right here to decree and declare everything with my name on it is going to be covered with the blood of Jesus God cover our children God cover our families God cover our generations don't let a one be lost let the church say yeah. 
She gave it to a husband that was with her because women are creatures of influence. You can influence your mate to do the right thing or the wrong thing. You can influence your family. God has given you the uh, to be a creature of influence. What are you doing with your influence? What are you doing with your influence? We need to call for the weeping women, the mourning women, to grab a hold to the horns of the altar and weep between the altar and the door and decree and declare, I'm covering my family. We are the praying women. We are the weeping women. We are the women that's on the wharf that's on the war path to let the enemy know you can't have my children come on in here we are the women that can speak to your children and say there's a doctor here here's a lawyer here here is a man of God here here is a politician here here is a preacher here come on here if you don't speak over your children the world will tell them what they're going to be if you don't speak over your children and lay hands on your sons and lay hands on your daughters the world the enemy will make a mockery out of them the enemy will destroy them let the church say yes let the church say yes but she gave she gave the fruit to her husband and he did eat it and when he ate it, their eyes were opened. Can't get no witness in here. Their eyes were opened and they realized that they were naked. They'd been in the garden of God all this time, but naked and it was all right. They'd been in this garden of God all this time, living in the utopia situation. And as long as they obeyed, as long as as they worshiped as long as they did right everything was all right the problem didn't happen until Lucifer beguiled the woman the woman ate and then gave it to the man their eyes were open and now they're naked and ashamed and because they're ashamed they hide themselves where are you Adam can't get no witness in here we've got people that are trying to hide themselves but the Lord sees like he sees at night just like he sees it day there's no hiding place somebody wrote a song and said if I cover my feet my head gonna show if I cover my head my feet gonna show there's no hiding place oh sinner man where you're gonna run where you're gonna run there's no hiding place come on in here there's no hiding place there are people in the world in this pandemic that are trying to run that are trying to hide that are doing their dirt on the side and don't think that God doesn't know it but the eyes of the Lord are everywhere beholding the good and the evil let the church say yes I want you to know he is the God that you can't you can't shuck them you can't jive them you can't talk them down you can't make them you can't lie to him because he's omnipotent he's omniscient he knows everything I think the psalmist said Lord thou knoweth my down sitting and my uprising and understands my thoughts afar off I want you to know he knows what you're going to do before you do what you're going to do. He knows it all. Let the church say yes. Adam is hiding. Eve is hiding. They put fig leaves around them to cover them. But I'm glad about a God that comes to see about his people. I need somebody in here to know we're in the middle of a pandemic. But God comes.
comes to see about his people when we're in the midst of a horrible thing but God comes to see about his people God comes to see about us the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance he came that we can have life can't get no witness in here and have that more abundantly under my shy Adam and Eve they're hiding but the Lord the the Lord Jesus the Lord God Almighty he comes the Bible says they heard his voice walking his voice is walking in the garden Adam where art thou Adam where art thou do you think God said it because he didn't know what was going on you know he's omniscient you know he knows everything but he said it for Adam to consider you're not where you were yesterday you're not where you were last night what happened to you what happened to you who got in your ear who made you disobey who turned you out who made you go astray who made you go to the left can't get no witness in here and the Lord is calling he's saying the same thing today Adam where are you who made you go out who made you turn left who made you who made you go astray you know better than that that's not what I taught you that's not what I told you Adam where are you you're not where you were come on in here before the pandemic this pandemic has come in here and turned people out this pandemic has come in here and made whores out of God's people. This pandemic has come in here and caused people to go astray because of the frustration, because of the fear, because of all that's going on. They've been doing it whatever they want to do. But I hear the Lord's voice walking in the earth. I hear the Lord's voice walking in the glory and he's saying where are you where are you you used to pray you don't pray no more you used to read your word you don't read your word no more you're drinking you're smoking you're sexing you're texting you're just going wild can't get no witness in here but the Lord is calling you but the Lord is calling you he's saying ah Adam, where are you? The Lord is calling us. Let the church say yes. I'm a man shy. And then Adam starts to talk back because you know sin will make you sassy. Sin will devastate your relationship with God. And uh, Adam says, we hid ourselves because we were naked. Uh, and we were ashamed. Uh, we are afraid of you. And the Lord says, any other day, you would rush into my arms. Any other day, we would have a worship experience. But now, you're telling me that you're naked. And the Lord is saying, I never told you that. I never told you you were naked. Where did you get that from? Who told you that? When you hang with the devil, when you play with trash, trash will turn you out. When you turn with play with dirt it will get all up in you and make you go Laquisha it will get all up in you and make you go hood it will get all up in you and make you act like a stray cat in the street it will get all in you and make you act out but I'm going to tell you 
the Lord is walking. I feel God's voice walking in the earth. What's wrong with you? What's the matter with you? He's walking in the earth to get you straight. The Lord says to Adam, hallelujah. Yes, there is no, uh, uh, there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood come on in here you've covered yourself with fig leaves and think you covered but you're still exposed and I see sin but the Lord says I'm coming to help you oh God help us today the Lord slays an animal he slays an animal and covers them with the skin thereof and tells them now let me give you your punishment to the Lucifer I'm taking your legs away Away from you and now that you will crawl on your belly and your head will be bruised by the heel of the Savior and 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 man you're gonna work by the sweat of your brow for the rest of your days and woman you're gonna bring forth your children with great travail and not only that I'm putting you out of the garden of Eden yes I am because you ate off of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you're in a fallen state and I've got to put you out of here before you eat off the tree of life and you will rem if you eat off of that you will remain in the fallen state for eons to come let the church say yes so the Lord put them out of the garden of Eden and put seraphims with flaming swords of fire at the entrances and the exits of the garden of Eden so that they would never come back in again let the church say yes let the church say yes and it's been trouble it's been trouble ever since man's got wickeder and wickeder let the church say yes but the Lord said I need I need I need someone to come and die for the sins of the world hallelujah Noah got drunk Abraham lied. David committed adultery. But if you want to get something done and you want to get it done right, you got to do it yourself. And so God, Yaman Shai, the only begotten of the Father, he said, Prepare me a body. I'll go down. He went down to 42 generations. Let the church say yes. He was despised and rejected of men. Yeah. But he went down for this purpose to die for sinners of whom Paul says, I am chief. Let the church say yes. The status quo. He preached. He teached. He healed. He raised this dead. He did miracles, signs and wonders. Yes, God. But the status quo turned against them. They wanted him dead. The Jews said he blasphemed, but they couldn't kill him. They turned him over to a kangaroo court. He went from Herod to Pilate. Come on in here. Pilate said, I find no fault, but still he released him to be crucified by the by the Romans and I want to tell you Jesus told them no man take my life I've got the power to put it down and pick it back up can't get no witness in here yes let the church see yes they put them on Calvary on a 
cross, Jesus said, this must happen. This got to happen. You've been slaying lambs, sacrificing bullocks, oxen upon the altar. But John said, here cometh the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He never said a mumbling word. Let the church see it. He locked his head in his shoulders. He gave up the ghost and died. Let the church say yes. He died to the sun stop shining. He died to the veil of the temple was rent in twain. He died. Yes, he did. Went on down in hell. Yes, he did. Went on down in hell and preached Jesus. Preached to the captive. Yes, he did. On the third day, he got up with all power in his hands. And I hear him say, I, I'm alive forevermore. We're in a pandemic, but Jesus is alive. We're in a pandemic. You might be in sin, but Jesus is walking in the earth. Jesus is walking. I hear his voice walking. Adam, where are you? Come on out of there. Come on out of the club. Come on out of the bar. Come on out of that woman's house. Get out of that man's bed. Come on out of sin. Come on out of mess. And let me free you. And let me deliver you. And let me set you free. I died that you can have life and have it more abundantly. Adam, there's hope. Adam, there's hope. Look to Jesus and live. Look to Jesus and live. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I want to tell you there's hope for America. There's hope for the ghetto there's hope for the children there's hope for you there's hope for me look to Jesus and you can live come on he wants you to live he wants you to live he wants you to be free he wants you to be delivered he wants you to be CS Deliverance is here. Deliverance is here. God heal you, man. God heal you, woman. God bring you out. God deliver you. What was trying to steal your joy? God free you. God deliver you. God set you free. God heal your hurt. God put the pieces back together. Get up and praise him. Get up and praise him. If you praise him, he'll fix it. No time to sit down. Get up and give him glory. Get up and give him glory, brother. Get up and give him glory. God wants you to give him glory. God wants you to give him glory. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. Adam, where are 
are you? Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Get up from where you are. Get up from where you are. Raise your hands. Open your mouth and give God the glory. Give God the glory. This pandemic is not going to turn us out. deliverance there's deliverance for you all you gotta do is break out with praise if you break out with praise he will deliver you right now all you gotta do is break out with praise he'll deliver you right now do you believe that do you believe that do you believe that Mikey, you know he's doing it. Somebody said, you don't know. I've been hurt. I've been wounded. The Lord knows it. Now you give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. I want to tell you that God's healing your heart right now. I want to tell you God's healing your hurt right now. sending strength to your body. God's healing your body right now. Woman be healed. Woman be healed. Woman be healed. Your body, your mind, your spirit. Man be healed. Man be healed. Where art thou? I made my way back to church. I made my way back to church. I made my way back. Jesus came and found me. And he gave me peace. And he gave me joy. And he gave me strength. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. In the midst of all of this, we're going to be all right. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. You want to praise him all through your house. Praise him in the hallway. Praise him in the living room. Praise him in the kitchen. Praise him in the bedroom. Go through every room in your house and praise him. We're getting rid of every spirit that's not like God. We're going to get rid of every spirit that's not like God. For your people, for your house. God heal your hurt. God help you to go through it. Yes, he does. You're healed. You're delivered. You're set free. Now praise him. Now praise him. Now praise him. Somebody said I'm crying though. Praise him through the tears. Praise him through the tears. Praise him through the tears. What's hurting you? What's hurting you? Give God praise through it. Praise him when it hurts. Praise him when you're down. Praise him when you're talked about. Praise him when you're mistreated. Praise him. 
You gotta praise him. Yeah, praise him all day, all day. Praise him, give him glory. Praise him, give him honor. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you? Why don't you? Praise him! Give God everything you got. Give God everything you got. Give God everything you got. Praise him! Why don't you praise him? Why don't you praise him? Why don't you give him praise? Give him glory. Come on in here. The devil's a defeated. He's a liar. He's a lying wonder. The truth is not in him. Hallelujah. The victory is you got through it. And you didn't get through it yet, you're getting through it. I'm getting through it. I'm getting through it. I'm getting through it. This pandemic is not going to be the end of us. Oh, we're going to live to tell the story. Hallelujah. We're going to live to tell the story. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth us out of them all somebody bow your heads for prayer father we thank you we thank you because you're the greatest we thank you because you're the greatest you came and got us when we were dead in our trespasses and sin you came and got us you came and got us Oh, God, we're going to live for you for the rest of our days. For the rest of our life, we're going to follow after you. For the rest of our life, we're going to live for you. For the rest of our days, we're going to follow after you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for the miracles, the signs, and the wonders that's coming to our house. We're still in the midst of our 153 days of blaze. Miracles, signs, and wonders are coming to your house. Ah, the devil is angry. The devil is mad. He's upset. But he's a lying wonder. He's a defeated foe. The blood of Jesus is against him. The devil is defeated. God is exalted and we've got the victory. We've got the victory right now. We've got the victory right now. Father, we thank you for it. We give you praise for it. We give you glory for it. We give you honor for it. And we thank you. And we thank you. And we hallelujah. And we thank you. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We shall not be defeated. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for the miracle signs and wonders that are coming to our homes. And this is the least we'll ever be. Money, large sums of unexpected money is coming to our home. And we shall eat and live off the fatness of the land hallelujah in every high place god will bring down and we thank you and we give you glory in jesus name adam in jesus name adam jesus is calling you come on here he's calling you to come on come on Come on and give him your life. Come on and live for him for the rest of your days. Come on and commit your way to him. Come on, come on, commit your way to him. Tell him that you love him. Tell him that you'll serve him. Tell him that you'll go with him all the way. Ask him to forgive you for what you've done wrong and ask him to help you. If you ask him to help you, he'll help you. Ask the Savior to help you. Promise to strengthen and keep you. Jesus is willing to help you. 
Jesus will carry you through. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Every heart say, amen. God bless you today. I pray that you were blessed by our virtual service. We want to say to you, meet us on Sunday mornings for, face, for um, Facebook Live now. We're going to go on Facebook Live for Sunday school. For Sunday school where we've been having Zoom classes, but we're going to go live so we can reach even more people. Meet us next Sunday at 10 a.m. on Facebook Live. Blend it. You can be here in the building or you can be virtually there where you are. Uh, Zoom on with Superintendent Minister uh, Howard Perry will be with us at 10 a.m. on next Sunday. Come on here, and then at noon, you'll see my big face telling you that Jesus is the joy of living. Don't forget, Wednesday nights, we have noonday, Wednesday at noon, we have noonday prayer. We have noonday service, a noonday service, old time devotional, testimonies, come on here, and prayer. Meet us on Wednesdays at noon on uh, Facebook Live, and then meet us on Wednesday night for prayer and Bible study. Amen? We're on the move. We're doing great things. The Lord is with us. I need you to be a blessing today. Come on. If you haven't, you can give through Givelify. You can give through Venmo, Cash App, Amen, PayPal. Amen. Give the Lord your tithe. Give the Lord your tithe. Bring the Lord a seed. Give the Lord an offering. Some people say tithe is just for law. But even before the law, pre-law, come on here. Abraham gave tithe to Melchizedek. So, you know, it's before the Lord, and even in the New Testament, they speak of it. Come on, can't get no witness in here. Give the Lord uh, what you do him. Can, can I get a witness in here? Can I get a witness in here? And I've got some witnesses here that says he'll open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. We bring our tithe. We give the Lord our offering today. Amen. The Lord do you well. Every seed you sow is good ground. It'll grow here. Can get no witness in here. Every seed you sow in this uh, soil is good ground, good ground, good ground. It'll grow here. Come on here. The Lord brought us from renting to owning. Can't get no witness in here. The Lord brought us from the wilderness and into our promised land, and he's still doing great and notable things. Let the church say amen. God bless you. Uh, Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace, success, prosperity, perfect health, long life, wealth, riches, the favor of God. In Jesus' name, every heart say amen. May there be shalom in your home.